Now today we'll be going over how to test and replace the heated oxygen sensor. Two techniques to do this. One way is with a modern approach using a scan tool. The second approach is a little old fashioned, simply using a digital multimeter. So now the first option to test the oxygen sensor is with a scan tool. Many of you probably have one of these at home. The key thing is you need a tool that's able to read live data. Now this is one of the more inexpensive ones. It's less than $50 purchased off the Amazon. I'll include a link in the description box below in case you do need one. And this just simply plugs into, it's known as the OBD2 port on this Honda. It's on the passenger side. Many vehicles, it may be on the driver's side, but you just find that port, you plug it in, and then we turn on the ignition key. Okay, make sure we have a good connection here. Now, before you do this test, just make sure your vehicle is properly warmed. You don't want to do this on a cold engine. Okay, so let's start the vehicle. And then grab your scan tool here. Okay, so again, we need data stream. And you'll find two different options on this data stream regarding the oxygen sensor. One is for sensor one, the other is for sensor two. Now in our case, we are dealing with sensor one. That means it's before the catalytic converter. So if you take a look, oxygen sensor output voltage. This is what we want. B1 just stands for bank one, don't worry about that. S1 is sensor one, that's what we want. Do not choose sensor two, okay? So sensor one, and take a look at the reading. Now, if you have P0131, that's a low voltage trouble code. So if this is continually under 0.5 volts, chances are you have an issue, but we will double check it. You wanna double check that, and I'll show you how in a moment. If you have P0132, which is a high voltage trouble code, then this would say continually above 0.9 volts. But just to verify that we do have a problem with the sensor and not a wiring or an ECM or a computer issue, we'll need to do one more thing. Very, very simple. So now it's been a good 30 minutes just to let the exhaust cool down. And again, we're dealing with sensor one. So that's before, this is the catalytic converter. Sensor one is before the catalytic converter. So this is toward the engine, and that's toward the rear of the vehicle. So sensor one, sensor two is that guy. That we'll do in a couple days regarding sensor two. Now you can test this sensor while it's still attached to the exhaust. In other words, you want to verify that you don't have a power issue or a computer issue. So what I'm going to do is remove it from the exhaust because it's a lot easier to film. To remove it, we'll use an oxygen sensor removal tool. Now this is an oxygen sensor removal tool. These are inexpensive and something I purchased off Amazon. As always, I'll have a link in the description box below in case you need any tools. These are terrific because if you try using just a hand wrench, a lot of times you have to angle the wrench. And if you're not on the sensor the right way, you can strip it. So this has an opening, which you'll see in a moment, that allows you to simply place the entire tool over the sensor. Half inch extension, attach it to a ratchet, and then break it loose. Now I've soaked some PB blaster at that location. This makes it a lot easier to remove the sensor. And again, with the tool here, you simply just place it right over it, face it the right way. Now put down the camera and break it loose. Okay, so ratchet, extension, lay it on the tool. Okay, there we go. Pinch it down there. there we, okay. Remove the tool. Okay, now it's nice and loose. Now just to show you how to disconnect these, very, very tight right here is the top of the transmission, but right where my index finger is, you press this down. So in my case, I press down with my left finger, and then with my right hand, I can't do this with the camera obviously right now, but with my right hand, I reach over, uh, and then pull on the body, and it comes right out. It's tight, but 
make sure you pull from the body. Don't pull from the wiring because you don't want to ruin any of these uh, of these harness connectors. And then here is the sensor. Now testing the sensor here on the bench is very, very simple. Again, you can do this exact test while this is still attached to the exhaust. Again, just makes it easier so you guys can see what's going on here. This is a digital multimeter, inexpensive, $20 off Amazon. If you really plan on working, maintaining, repairing your own vehicles, you really need one of these, an absolute must have. So you have a number of different functions. In our case, we want to do an ohms or a resistance test. So that's simply the omega symbol, okay? Now every multimeter, they have two leads, a red lead and a black lead. So I'm just simply plugging in the leads and we're simply just going to obtain a reading from the sensor to see if it's working. A good sensor is typically three to 10 ohms. It all depends on the temperature. So if this was really, really hot right now in the car, this would push out if it's working around three ohms. Here in the garage, it's out of the car. It's been sitting here for a while. It's 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is going to be something higher, maybe around eight to 10 ohms. So all that I have to do this are two wires with alligator ends, okay? So take a look at the harness connector. We have four prongs. So by process of elimination, so in other words, I don't know which two prongs to touch. So let's just process of elimination. Let's see if we get a reading here. So one lead goes to red. Okay, hook up the other one. Simple enough. This is something you could do at home. Save yourself a lot of money. And we have no reading, okay? Everything is hooked up. There's nothing happening here. Make sure you guys can see this. There we go. So everything is hooked up. Nothing is happening here. So let's change the sequence. Okay, nothing. Move this guy up here. And now we see a reading. And we're at seven ohms worth of resistance. This is a good working sensor. Now this last test again is if you've tested the sensor, it's working correctly, but for some reason you have the trouble code stored in your vehicle and you wanna verify if power is getting to the sensor. Again, if power's not getting to the sensor, then you have a wiring issue. So let's verify that everything is okay. So once again, multimeter, and we're going to do a volt. You don't want AC, okay? AC is household current. Make sure it's volts, DC. And then I have a neat little kit. This is also something I purchased off Amazon. I think it was like seven bucks. You'll see why this is a big help. So first we're going to turn on the ignition key. And finally, the last test is verifying if power is getting to that harness connector. So this is the connector that plugs into the sensor. So if we're not getting power here, then the sensor just simply can't turn on and the computer can't read it. So let's verify that we have no wiring issues. So I have the red lead running to the multimeter. So that's your positive lead, okay? And I'm using that little adapter to help me keep that in play in the harness connector. The black lead goes to ground. That's any good metal point. Really good spot is the heat shield. Take a look at the multimeter. And as you can see, we have 11 and a half volts. So this is a working connection. We have no issues here whatsoever. Now, if you do this test, the sensor is working in good shape, but you have no power getting to that harness connector, you need to find the brake. Now you can find the brake, it just takes a lot of work, but in fact, there is this tool, it's, it's a little expensive, I think it's 80 bucks, actually maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I'll, I'll dig up and include it in the description box below, but it will find any electrical brake on your vehicle. So that's going to be your best bet just to save a lot of time. But again, do these tests, you can really pinpoint where the problem is. Let me show you how you can quickly reinstall this. Just put something on the threads, which you'll see in a second, and you'll be all done. Now, before you reinstall the sensor, you just want to apply some anti-seize compound. Make sure it's high temperature, a copper formula. If you purchase a new sensor, typically they'll include a little, little package of the anti-seize compound. This is a little messy, maybe. Let me grab a Q-tip. Okay, let's grab a Q-tip here. 
and make sure it's only on the threads. You don't want it on the element. It can ruin the sensor, and again, these are not inexpensive if it's a good sensor. Don't go with uh, an aftermarket brand because chances are it's not going to last very long. Get the factory stuff, Denzel, Bosch, whatever the car came with from the factory. And then last step, just make it nice and snug. You don't have to overdo it. There we go. That's it. That's all it takes. You're all done. So, and do the work yourself. Save yourself a ton of money. And uh, also, there we go. Learn about your vehicle. As always, thank you for watching.